Well, there was no shortage of games to watch on Columbus Day if you're a New York sports fan. Not the greatest day for football fans, but the Mets and Yankees continue to roll along in the league championship series. Here to talk all about it is our very own Bobby Santoro. Bobby, welcome back, my friend. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Mike. Of course. So let's start with the Giants, who played Sunday against the Bengals. Another not-so-great game for quarterback Daniel Jones. No touchdowns, one interception. They would lose this one 17-7. Where did it go wrong for the G-Men? It really just starts with that offense kind of struggling to get things going with Daniel Jones, obviously. I mean, you know, you, you didn't have Malik Neighbors, and they didn't have Devin Singletary that game, too. So, you know, yeah, you're missing a few of your key pieces there on offense. And, you know, you, you'd think at halftime, too, they'd look up, and they're only down 7 nothing to the Bengals. And I know the Bengals have struggled. But to be it for their defense to only let up that many points to a Bengals offense is, is a good sign for them as well. But, yeah, it's clearly – I mean, it's really just looking like this is going to be it for, you know, for Daniel Jones. With with hearing that Dayball and Shane are going to actually be there again next year, they're going to want to have another quarterback in there to kind of build off of. But, yeah, he's got – it seems like it's just – you know, it looks like that that one year where they were able to, you know, beat Minnesota in the playoffs was more of an anomaly than the norm for him. So it seems to be the end of it for him. Now, the Jets game was a little more interesting on Monday night. They were at least in it until the very end. There were flags all over the place, some overturned calls – Greg Zerline missed a huge field goal attempt that proved to be costly because the Jets lost by only three points. What were your takeaways? Yeah, I mean, the the, the flags were uh, were unbelievable. I mean, it, even Aaron Rodgers, I think, after the game said that one of the roughing the passers called on him that, that was called against him, against Buffalo on him that he said it wasn't even a roughing the passer. So he it was a very interesting game. I mean, every two seconds there was a flag. I mean, in terms of Zerline, I mean, he's he's a proven kicker, but I mean, yeah, he had, he had a bad night. The wind, everyone was talking about the wind here last night too. Now, look, I don't know if that has much effect on a 35-yard field goal or 37, whatever, one of the ones that he missed. I know he hit the crossbar twice, but I mean, look, we'll take him in Green Bay with our kicker, so whatever. But uh, but yeah, so, uh, you know, look, the, the takeaway from it is Aaron Rodgers actually played very well last night at probably his best game as a Jet. That interception at the end, sure, was not one of his best decisions. I think they're going to be fine, and I think now with you know with, with the way things are going with the new head coach, with obviously you're going to rally around your interim head coach, so things should start moving up for them. I still think they're they're going to make the playoffs. Now, this morning we learned about a huge pickup for the Jets in wide receiver Devontae Adams. How big of an acquisition is that? Well, it's huge. <laughs> um, we we obviously know with uh, that Rodgers likes his guys. He likes his guys in the, in the wide receiver room. So obviously, you see it with Lazard. I mean, Alan Lazard was. Uh, we basically learned that Aaron Rodgers made Alan Lazard. So, I mean, they have, they have a chemistry like they do. He hit that Hail Mary last night to Lazard. Um, and Devontae Adams, I mean, I don't know how long it's taken to kind of get back in step, but, I mean, watching them for, God, for, for I mean, almost a decade in Green Bay. I mean, these guys, it's like they're, they can run routes. They can do this in their sleep, in the dark, whatever cliche you want to do. You'll see a lot of back shoulder passes. This will help them a lot. It's a matter of, you know, the rest of how they can put it all together. So, the one thing that you'll that I think it opens up is more looks for Garrett Wilson now because he'll because Garrett Wilson the, the look at Devontae everyone knows that Rodgers loves Devontae Garrett will be open now more he targets Garrett Wilson a lot too so he has more options this will help him a lot in the long run. Now let's change sports and switch over to my New York Mets they got pummeled absolutely pummeled by the Dodgers in Game One but came back strong in Game Two to even up the series and now they head back to New York with the momentum in their favor so how good does that have to feel for them? Oh, it has to feel great. And even getting, you know, even, you know, losing pretty handily in the first game of the series. I mean, you had Kodai Sanga pitching, who did pitch well against, um, who pitched well against Philly. But still, you have one of your, you know, you have one of your guys who's only made, what, two, three starts in the year, if that, um, you know, because he's been hurt. So to, to be able to bounce back like that, and it just shows that pitching means everything, especially in the series, because the, the Dodgers had, uh, went with like a bullpen game, or, or at least started with an opener yesterday, and the Mets really just kind of, jumped on top of that and jumped out to an early lead. So, I mean, you got to feel great going back into city field. I, what's going to have to happen is if, if you're asking me, I think it'll be, it's all going to, I think it's going to go to six games. I think if the, if the Mets do win this, they're going to have to win that. They're going to have to win game six in LA. I mean, it'll be tough if they win all three at home, that'd be great. I can see it, but I just feel like, Met the Mets at City Field with that fan base. I really do think they're at least going to win two there, and they'll have to win one on the road. And maybe, maybe we see a Subway Series, but we'll just we'll, we'll pump the brakes on that for now. And last, we'll talk your team, the New York Yankees against the Guardians. Carlos Rodon gave a strong performance. Giancarlo Stanton and Juan Soto showed literal strength with their home runs. Dude, like you said, we may see a Subway Series yet again. 
Oh yeah, I, it was. It, last night was definitely. It was. It was two different Carlos Rodons that we saw. I was actually there for Game Two uh, a week ago, last Monday, for Game Two of the ALDS, and it was. I'll be honest with you, seeing him that fired up was firing me up. It was awesome to see it, but you saw him. It's. It's his. You know, it's what makes him great sometimes, and it's also what kills him is his, his emotions because he gives up a home run and he unravels. Last night we saw him. You could tell he was he was trying very hard not to get fired up and, re- and react to it. But a good performance by him in game one, and now you have Garrett Cole tonight in game two. And, I mean, honestly, playoff John Carlos Stanton is, is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's like night and day. I mean, it, it, you, you would, if you if people were talking about him before the year saying, oh, we got to get rid of him, he can't be on the team. It all matters what you're doing in the playoffs here. He's earning his pinstripes, and he, the beat goes on for him. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully we get this Subway series. And it's – I honestly, though, I'll be honest with you, as a Yankee fan, seeing the Mets kind of just run through us this year, it's a little nerve-wracking. But I think it would be great for the city and great for everyone around here. Well, nonetheless, I cannot just wait to see what this uh, week brings. Bobby Santoro, thanks as always, my friend. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for having me. Head over to ONNJ.com for the latest news and sports anytime.